In this video, I will show you how to use path analysis in Google Analytics 4. Make sure you watch the entire video because at the end of it, I will share four additional ideas of what can you analyze next with path analysis. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to Analytics Mania YouTube channel. If you are new here, I teach people how to work with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. So if you want to learn these tools and benefit from them, then consider subscribing to this channel. Analysis Hub is a powerful feature set that is available in Google Analytics 4. In the past on this channel, I have created video tutorials on things like funnel analysis or exploration reports. This time, we will take a look at another feature, which is called Path Analysis. Compared to the flow reports of Universal Analytics, Path Analysis in GA4 has some pretty good improvements. It is not perfect, but in some situations, it can be valuable. And also, let's not forget that at the end of this video, I will share four ideas of what else can you analyze with path analysis. All right, so let's take a look. You can find path analysis by going to analysis section on the sidebar of Google Analytics 4, click it and then click analysis hub. In this video, I will be using the official GA4 demo account and you will find the link to it below the video. That way you will be able to create your own path analysis with real data. When you are in Analysis Hub, you have two options how to create path analysis. You can either start with the blank template or you can click on path analysis right here. This time, let's click on blank. Here by default, you will see the exploration report. So if you want to create a pathing analysis, you can click plus right here and then select path analysis then you're free to delete the exploration report right here. Just like with other techniques in the analysis hub, we see three main parts in the interface, variables column, tab settings, and the actual output of our report. In the variables column, you can add the name to your analysis. Then you can add some segments that you are going to use in this report. Then we have dimensions. For example, if you plan to use device category as a breakdown dimension, then first it must be included right here because here you are having some items that you are going to use in the tab settings column. And then we have metrics. When it comes to path analysis, there are only three metrics available at the moment, which are active users, event count, and total users. So if you plan to use some additional metrics, you will see that they are all disabled. Then let's move to the tab settings column. This one is directly responsible for the visualization that you will see right here. For example, if you want to see how a certain group of your visitors is behaving, let's say paid traffic, you can then add segments from the variables column to segment block right here. And then what will happen is that we will start seeing data, not of all users, but only of those which were acquired with paid traffic. Then we have the note type section. The note type section affects what is available in this dropdown right here. Unfortunately, at the moment of this recording of this video, it is not possible to edit this in any way. You cannot add any new dimensions or you cannot remove them. This dropdown affects what kind of data are you going to see in every node. Right now we have selected event name, therefore we can see what kind of events are happening in this particular column. For example, if I click here, I will go one level deeper and we will see what kind of events came after the page view. But if I want to see what kind of pages happened after the page view event, so it means that what kind of pages did the visitor view after that, I could switch to page title and screen name or screen class. And then we will see the page titles. Unfortunately, at the moment of recording this video, it is not possible to include dimensions such as page path, which in my opinion would be very useful because they usually describe pages better than just page title. But I hope that this will change in the future. Now let me quickly undo and then we will take a look at another option, which is view unique note only. The best way to explain this feature is to show an example. So let me quickly disable it. So what we see here is that we start our analysis from the session start event. Then we see that after session start, we had a page view. Now let me click right here. And then we will see that after a page view, a lot of users made another page view. So if this feature is disabled and your visitors do same events one after another, for example, page view, then page view, then maybe after this event, another page view occurred. So this disabled option allows these kind of subsequent similar events to be displayed in the chart. But if you enable this, then the path analysis will be showing only unique nodes only, or in other words, two identical event names will not be displayed as going one after another. So we have page view, then we have this one. But if I click right here, you will see that the page view is displayed again. So with this option enabled, two similar events cannot go one after another. 
Later in this video, I will show you one example where having this feature disabled is useful. And if you're wondering when is it useful to have this feature enabled, one of the examples could be scroll event. Because when a visitor lands on a page, that visitor might scroll and you might track, let's say, three consecutive scroll events. So if this feature was disabled in your path analysis, you would see session start, page view, and then scroll, scroll, scroll. But in that case, I don't want to see three consecutive scroll events. That's why I could enable this feature. And then I would see session start, page view, scroll, and then some other event. For example, click, maybe other page view and something like that. Then you can also break down your data by adding some dimension right here. For example, you can double click or drag the device category. And then you will see an updated path analysis where you can hover on a particular device category and you will see how your data is visualized right here. So in my case, most of the traffic, I mean the paid traffic, is coming from the mobile devices. Because if I hover on mobile, you will see that most of the nodes now get a dark blue color. Then we have a filter section, but this one is not working as well as I would expect. For example, if I wanted to filter down to certain event names, for example, session start and page view, I could not do that with filters. Because if you use filters, the only match type is exactly matches. And if I, let's say, enter session start to use this as the first filter, you will see that then the report goes bananas. So in this case, if you want to filter down to certain list of events, there is another option and I will later show you in this video. But filters are not useful to narrow down the list of events. However, this part works well if we use dimensions such as, let's say, device category. So if I add device category to filters and enter, let's say, desktop, I can narrow down to those events. And finally, there are node filters, but you cannot control them from here. You can add them by doing the right click on the nodes right here. So for example, if I, for some reason, want to exclude this particular page view node, I can do the right click, then exclude node and select it only, for example. And then this filter will be added right here. And the only thing that I can do with node filters, I mean, in this section is just to delete if I don't want to use this filter anymore. So once I do this, then I can click right here and then we will see the page view once again. Then, as it always is with the analysis hub, if you want to use some dimension or some segment, for example, in the tab settings and that item is not visible right here or right here, and I mean the variables tab, then you will have to click the plus icon next to that particular section and add the item that you want to use in your report. So for example, if I want to use the page path dimension, I would have to click plus and then find that page path dimension right here. Then another cool thing that is available in path analysis is the backwards pathing or reverse pathing or whatever you call it. Basically, you can start your pathing analysis not from the starting point, but from the ending point. So if you want to do that, you should click start over and then select the ending point right here. You can click drop or select node, then click event name. And then you will have to select what kind of event do you want to have at the end, for example, purchase. And then you can go backwards and see what did your visitors do before they made a purchase. And later in this video, we will take a look at the ending point of the pathing analysis as well. So that was a quick introduction into the interface. Now let's take a look at several examples of how can you actually use the path analysis. So if you haven't yet, you should click start over. And then let's say that I want to check what is happening in the checkout after the initial begin checkout event. So first of all, I should remove the filters and the breakdown to make sure that everything is fresh and new. Also, I will remove the segment and then I will click on the starting point. Here I will click event name and I will select the begin checkout event right here. Keep in mind that this event is not automatically tracked on every Google Analytics 4 property. This is a part of the e-commerce tracking setup. So you will have to configure your Google Tag Manager setup to send this event. And if you want to learn the entire process of how to properly implement e-commerce tracking, I have a dedicated module in my intermediate slash advanced Google Tag Manager course. I will post a link to that course below the video. So I have selected my starting point, which is begin checkout. And then let's take a look what happens later after that event occurs. In fact, just out of curiosity, let's disable this unique notes only feature. And maybe I will see something weird. So I will click it. And then I see that the most popular event right here is page view. But weirdly enough, we have one more event of which count is even larger. So if I click it, I will see that we have begin checkout and then we have begin checkout event once again, which is kind of weird. Let's click this and dig deeper. 
and then I see begin checkout event once again. So for some reason, when visitors begin checkout, we get three consecutive begin checkout events in Google Analytics 4. So my guess is that either something is incorrect with the tracking implementation and in the first checkout step, we get three identical begin checkout events, or maybe, you know, something is wrong with the website. Something is wrong with that first checkout step. Maybe visitors are forced for some reason to refresh the page multiple times. And you know what? Let's check what is actually happening on a website. So here I am on that website which is tracked by this Google Analytics 4 property. So this is the official Google merchandise store. Let's add any product to a cart and then we will start a checkout. So I will add this product to cart. Now I have something in my cart and now I will continue to check out. But first I will enable the developer tools of my browser. And then in the console, I will have some stuff and I have a bunch of events and they are all dispatched by a plugin, which is called data layer inspector by Adsware. I will post a link to this extension below the video. I very often use it while working with Google analytics and Google tag manager. So one of the features of this extension is that it shows all the requests that were sent from this website to Google analytics for and Google analytics and some other tools. And it just displays events in fairly convenient format for me. So I will now clear the console and I will click continue to check out and see what is happening. So we have a lot of data layer pushes. We have some errors, a lot of mess. And I think I saw four consecutive begin checkout events. So this was sent to this tracking ID. Then we have events sent to the same tracking ID again to the same tracking ID. So you get the idea. The problem with multiple begin checkout events is not because of weird behavior of users or let's say weird flow of the website, but because of tracking implementation is incorrect. So we were able to identify this because we were using the path analysis. So if I was working on the tracking implementation of this website, I would then register a bug and forward it to a developer and ask him or her to fix it. Because normally only one begin checkout event should be activated when the checkout is initiated. And now let's take a look at another example. So I will start over and let's go to the events section of this very same demo account. So I will do the right click and open a new tab. On this website, they're tracking a bunch of various events. And one of those events is called errors. Again, this is not something that is automatically tracked by Google Analytics 4. Developers or Google Tech Manager specialists who work with this website, they are responsible for sending that data to Google Analytics 4. So in the last four weeks, there were almost 10,000 errors. So let's take a look what happens before the error occurs on a website, because maybe this will help us identify the exact flow of the visitor and what kind of actions drove that visitor to that error. So let's go back to the analysis hub. And then if you haven't yet, you should click start over and you will see this view once again. And then this time I will select the ending point. So I will click right here, enter event name, and then I will try to use the search and enter errors. And here is the event. Now here I see the count of error events. In fact, let's narrow down that date range to something more recent, for example, last several days. And we see that right before the error, another event occurs, which is page view. Now the reason why their numbers are very similar is because this event, which is errors, are tracking page not found errors, or in other words, 404 errors. So it's natural that every time a page view occurs, the 404 error is also tracked. So we can ignore this kind of event. Now let's click once again and go backwards. And then we see another page view. Now this page view occurred before that 404 error occurred. So it means that somewhere on this page, we have some broken link or maybe several broken links that redirect visitors to a page that is unavailable. Now, how can we identify what was the previous page on which that broken link exists? That can be done in several ways. One of them could be by switching from event name to page title. And here we say that the page title is page unavailable. So this is the title of that error page. Now let's go back one step backwards. And then we will see that most of the page views that occur before the 404 error are coming from the home page. Now, another question that you might have is on which exact pages does this 404 or page unavailable error occur? And this is the place where I wish we had page path as a dimension right here, but right now we cannot use it. We don't have it right here. So the other way could be to use the breakdown dimension. So here we could include the page path dimension and we can do that by clicking on dimensions right here so that we include that dimension in the variables tab. So I click on the plus icon and then I look for page path, which is here. And then I click apply. 
And now I can drag this dimension to the breakdown section right here. And now if I hover my mouse on this section, you will see some of the most popular URLs where that page not found error occurred. Now we see that there are some style errors right here because numbers and text values are kind of overlapping. So I hope that this bug will be fixed in the future. But right now let's focus on the first page path with the query string. So what we see right now is that on this shop by brand and Google Chrome Dino page, the 404 error occurs and most of the visitors are landing on this page from the home page. So we need to find that URL on the home page that is broken. And we can do that by going to the merchandise store, clicking on the logo and going to the home page. And then I will do the right click on the background, inspect, and here I will click Control F. If you're on a Mac, you can click Command F, and this will enable the search field right here. And here I will enter part of the URL that was visible right here in the report. So once I do that, I will see that there is one element that contains that URL. And if I switch to the sidebar and check what kind of element is it, so I hover my mouse on this highlighted element. And it looks like this button has a broken link. So let's check. Let's go back. Yep, this is the link. So now if I click on shop now, and if I get that page unavailable error, it looks like I have identified the problem that a developer of this website should fix. So let's click shop now, we are redirected. And boom, like this is actually happening on the live website. So page unavailable. And one of the buttons in carousel is redirecting to a 404 error. And I was able to identify that thanks to path analysis in Google Analytics 4. So these were two examples that I wanted to show. And now let me tell you some quick additional tips. And for the dessert, I will share some additional quick ideas that you can test on your own website. So let's start over, then I will click on starting point event name, and then I will select session start. And then I will click right here. Then we will see some events, we also see some scrolling. But let's say that I don't want to see scroll event in this column. One of the ways how we can exclude that is by clicking on pencil right here, and then just untick this checkbox and click apply. Then the scroll event will be moved to that more node right here, and you will see these events. And if you want to add some additional event, maybe that event is more important to you, you can click again on that pencil and click on checkbox right here, for example. But just keep in mind that this pencil applies only to this column. And if you want to also exclude scroll in this column, you will have to click the pencil once again right here and then untick the checkbox next to the scroll event. Then the second tip is for those who want to include only a certain set of events in their analysis report. So for example, if you want to see in your path analysis only three events, which are session start, page view and purchase, you can do it like this. Go to segments plus and then event segment. Here you should enter conditions uh, that your events must meet. And then this segment will pick only those events that match your criteria. So first, let's include the event, which is session start, or the event name should be page view, or the event name should be purchase. And then let's name this segment session start page view or purchase and click Save and apply. And now you will see what kind of URLs are visited between the session start and the purchase, then you can dive deeper if you want. Yeah, so this is one of the ways of how can you slice your data with the path analysis. And as promised for the end of this video, I will give you several ideas of what can you analyze next with path analysis. So the first idea could be to check what are your visitors doing once they land on the homepage of your website. So you can click on the starting point right here, then select page title, and then select home or whatever is the name of your homepage. And then from here, you will be able to see what happens next. So you can see where are your visitors going later. So for example, in Google's case, most people are going to error. And then also you can switch to event name and see what kind of events are your visitors doing after they go to homepage. Then another idea could be to check what happens for your visitors in the checkout when they face an error. So for example, you could go to segments, create a new segment, session segment, and then you can add some events where there is an event which is called begin checkout. And then we are looking for another event where the visitor saw the error, which is tracked with an event called errors. Well, in this case, there are some nuances because maybe the error occurred before the checkout and you should keep that in mind. But if you track some additional errors 
of which event names are, let's say, checkout errors, then that would really make sense for you to create this session segment and then slice and dice and see what are your visitors doing before that error occurs in the checkout. Then another example that you can analyze is related to newsletter subscription or maybe, you know, people can sign up on your website. So you could add that newsletter subscription event or that sign up event as an ending point in your path analysis. I'm not sure if GA4 merchandise store has any of that. Probably not. Yeah, it doesn't have one. But if it had, then you could include it right here and then see what are your visitors doing before they sign up for your newsletter or your trial or something else, like which pages are driving most of the traffic to that final sign up. And the last idea that you could analyze is to check what are your users doing after they log in. Maybe you have some very important interaction that you want them to complete, but for some reason, most of the visitors are not doing that when they log in. So maybe you should dig deeper and try to find uh, the reason for that and how can you improve. And that is how you can use path analysis in Google Analytics 4. If you have some additional ideas or tips on how do you plan to use it, let me know in the comments below. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.